Well, well, I'm very glad that you came today. I'm very glad to be here, indeed. You uh, came in your, over on my motor? In your home, yes. I came over. Very pleasant trip over. Starting yesterday morning from Lynn. Well, it's been a long time since you've been here. And it's uh, delighted to have you come here again. Well, I'm... After so many... Oh, I get several years. I'm very it? glad to be here. Uh, Professor... I think you remember that about uh, two years ago, uh, we made the arrangements. It was while Louis Robinson was alive to uh, take pictures of the uh, past presidents of the Institute of Electrical Engineers, the living presidents, of course. And uh, you were one of the earliest presidents. Uh, there are very few of the early age I mean, there are very few that are still alive uh, that uh, of your time. And we'd be very happy indeed if you could uh, tell us something for the benefit of the um, uh, American Institute uh, members uh, of your life. It's been most interesting, so productive. I can do so, I think, uh, by saying that 65 years ago, about 65 years ago, I came across the ocean from England to the United States, the family settling in Philadelphia. I there attended the public schools and the Boys Central High School eventually, but there was an interval between my attendance of one uh, of the schools. It was not a, a direct succession. I was forced out of school at 11 to stay out two years because the uh, entrance age of the Boys Drill High School was 13 and I was only 11. So the problem was what to do with me during the two extra years. Well, some of them said, some of the advisors said, keep him away from books and let him develop uh, physically. I said, if you do that, you might as well kill me now because I've got to have my book. So they modified the decision into saying, well, you can have them, all right. So I got hold of a book, which was called The Magician's Own Book, a book telling of puzzles and tricks and all kinds of little things, of chemistry experiments, electrical experiments. The electrical chapter was what struck me at once, and they told how to make an electrical machine out of a wine bottle. And I immediately set to work and uh, made just such a machine and started it in operation. And I got my first view of electric sparks from that machine, my first knowledge of electricity from that machine. And I made a whole lot of apparatus which it recommended to be made, like lighting jars and uh, little things of attraction and repulsion, uh, dancing figures and so on, and I had that whole equipment. Uh, along with a, a stool, which was made by bottles and the, and the board for making an insulated stool in order to insulate the person that wanted to be charged. And we charged them. With, a, with a, uh, an arrangement of this kind, my father rather poo-pooed the magnitude of my efforts, and uh, I thought I, was got, I had to get even with him somehow, so I made a battery of five jars and put them into operation and asked him to take the shock. I never heard after he took that shock anymore <laughs> derogation, derogatory remarks about my apparatus. I was very much interested to have you state that you uh, uh, obtained your first interest in uh, electricity from uh, reading a book. Uh, I think you recollect that uh, this is what happened to uh, Joseph Henry, one of our greatest of our electrical pioneers, as you know. I understand that it was so, as a matter of history. Now, as I remember it, uh, I first met you in 1876. You were at that time had just been made a full professor in the high school. Yeah. And uh, I also remember, I think, that you uh, gave some lectures at the Franklin Institute uh, and did a considerable amount of uh, electrical invention and general work in that line while I was at the, a pupil at the high school. But I know you did, in fact. I think people would be interested in that. 
the inscription, what you've done. Yes, I, I began my career of electrical development while still teaching in the high school as professor of chemistry. And I gave, on the request of the Franklin Institute, seven lectures on electricity, uh, five lectures on electricity, I should say, in 1877. And, uh, I think I heard those, too, some. Now, after that, the year following, uh, in 1878, in conjunction with my colleague, Professor Houston, who was associated with me at that time and for some time after, in the development of electrical work, we made some tests at the Franklin Institute involving dynamos of different types that we could get at that time. And immediately after that, I designed and built a dynamo for a single arc light. And uh, that formed the basis of the uh, later development of the thompson houston arc light system, which involved several features. One of them was the three-phase winding, the first three-phase winding ever produced. And the other was the automatic regulating system, which kept the current in the, in the light circuit at an even value, no matter how many lights were on that circuit lighted. The first arc light system which had shunting shunts for the arc light to put them out. Then, the, then there came along the desire to make the machine and keep its simplicity uh, and yet produce a large amount, of, a large number of lights, a, light, a number of lights amounting to 75 or 80. Well, it was found impossible to do that unless we had another invention, and that was the uh, air blast mechanism for introducing air instead of metallic vapor at the zeros of the surface. Those three things were very important. And another one was the lightning arrestor, which prevented the short-circuiting the lines to ground. Well, it seems to me that those uh, particular things that you've mentioned and emphasized are technically the, the reason for the great success notable success uh, in practice of the thompson Houston system as compared with other systems and which led to its, its really putting out of existence in competition the other systems which some of which started before. If I may, may be permitted to include the human element, I would say that one of the elements of that system, you know, of the success of that system, was yourself. Uh, my assistant. That's very kind, but I think we uh, also have to add... Uh, and that uh, I would add further on, later on, Mr. Coffin yes, as the head of the organization. I was going to make that same suggestion, Mr. Coffin. And of course, those who know you know that we none of us succeeded without your wonderful work. You're one of the inspiration which you gave us all. Uh, these events that you have described uh, briefly uh, happened, as I remember it, in uh, New Britain, Connecticut. We left New Britain, Connecticut sometime in 1893. 1883. 1883. 1883. Now, uh, you kindly tell us just what uh, happened uh, between 1883 and 1892 when the uh, uh, John Major Company was formed by the consolidation of the Thompson Houston and the Edison group of companies. Yes, I'd be very glad to. It is a, it's a long story and a great deal of detail, but I'll have to cut it short. And uh, I can only say this, that the developments went on at an increased pace under the encouragement of the new management. Uh, in, in Lib. In Lib. And that uh, during that period we developed new types of arc lamps, the M and K Thompson, uh, Thompson Rice uh, lamp, which became a standard. Then we took up uh, incandescent lighting. We took up the alternating current transformer system, which I had outlined as far back as 1879, Franklin Institute. And we built uh, the system, but we didn't consider it safe until the development of the earthing of the secondary, which was an invention of mine, for securing safety on the secondary lines of transformer system. I remember that very well indeed. Then we went on from that to the development of uh, electric welding, which was a separate idea and separate in, in company was established to, to carry that on, now called resistance welding, electric resistance welding. We then... Uh, that was an entirely new art. That was a new art entirely, nothing uh, ahead of it at all. And it has reached an enormous development today. We 
after these developments, we were continually refining and making new, new uh, affairs. But I ought to mention that in the early days, we had carried on apparatus, uh, or rather experiments, way back in wireless telegraphy, the first probably ever made, uh, sending waves through a building and picking up the waves. Now, uh, uh, it, it, the list would make a very long one to tell of the number, numerous inventions. Well, we took up the uh, electric street railway. It took up, yes, now the important thing, the very important thing that was taken up uh, before the consolidation was the development of the railway system. To do this effectually, Mr. Coffin had asked me if there was anyone in the art that had done the most work, as he thought, original, original work, in the railway, electric railway. I said, yes, there was a man, Mr. Charles J. Vanderpool, who had done a lot of work, said to me, Mr. Coffin said to me, can we get him? I said, why, I think so. He's in Chicago, and I think his back is a little tired. Well, we'll send on for him. The result was an interview which connected Vanderpool with our system, and Bentley Knight also became came into the uh, into the company as a railway engineer. Now, now uh, Vanderpool also contributed the carbon brush, which is oh problem. yes, a very important matter. Very Indeed. important. Very important matter. We had uh, had trouble with motors on cars. Everybody had trouble with motors on cars due to the fact that they were using metallic brushes. Vanderpool was called into conference with several of us, Mr. Rice among them, to find out whether there was any remedy for the troubles. And Vanderpool, in a modest way, said, uh, well, I had used uh, some years ago on a motor a carbon plate, of, uh, a carbon brush. And uh, he was told, as I remember, and I think I said this myself, I'll confess, that doesn't seem very reasonable, but we must try everything. Yeah. And we tried everything, <laughs> but we tried the carbon brush. And the carbon brush was one of the greatest successes we ever made in the, in the electric art. Oh, the making of the... Not only for motors, the but, but, but for generators, yeah, for, yeah. for deep, deep generators. All commutating apparatus. All commutating apparatus. That is most interesting, Professor. I did not hear you say anything about the uh, ventilation of transformers, which I think you originated about this period, or the uh, electrodynamic repulsion experiments, which led to so many useful things, the induction motor, for example. Will you kindly tell us something about those things? Yes, uh, about the, the time of the, in, of the development of the transformer, it occurred to me that we must have uh, cle uh, uh, we must have good cooling, yeah. especially in large transformers. And uh, that was the time of the development of the uh, cooling systems of, by water, by air, by uh, oil, oil immersed. Then there came along the uh, electric meter, uh, about the same time for measuring the current, especially the uh, DRW meter, as it was called, which is to uh, extensive use. That is the one that uh, obtained the prize at, at Paris, Paris in 1889. 1890. 1890. Then, uh, after that, uh, followed the uh, electroinductive uh, repulsion apparatus, uh, which formed the basis of the repulsion meter, and a great many other devices not necessary to mention now. Up to that time, I think we, uh, we were so actively engaged that uh, business arrangements were being perfected for consolidation. It was during this same period, was it not, that you were the president of the Institute of Electrical Eng American Institute of Electrical Engineers, 1889, yes. as I remember? Yes, and I had the duty of representing the American Institute of Electrical Engineers in London at a gathering of 600 engineers, 300 from America, and also uh, the duty of representing the Institute at Paris the exposition of 1889. I think that what I have said in this uh, record is uh, sufficient to outline at least the uh, uh, possibilities and, uh, and the uh, work that has been done in the, in the very many years. And some of the possibilities of the future may hinge upon some of those devices and, and uh, advances. Professor Thompson, I'm sure that we are all 
delighted and thank you for what you have told us of the, your most interesting life and the contributions which you have made to electrical engineering and other lines of activity. I might say, for the, although it may not be necessary, for the benefit of our audience, that Professor Thompson has uh, taken out between seven and eight hundred patents of various kinds, that he's received about every medal of merit, that, including the famous Heldman Medal, uh, that could, uh, that could that are to be had by anyone. That uh, the name of Elijah Thompson is known and uh, throughout the civilized world for the, for the work which uh, he has done, and he is beloved by all those who know him for his wonderful personality. It is a very great pleasure to me to be associated with him and to have this opportunity to uh, help with him record some of the things which have happened in, these early, in the early days. Thank you, Mr. Rice.